Assalamu alaikum viewers, my name is Afshan Khalid. Inshallah, the topic that we are going to discuss today is based on amanat, trustworthiness. The word amanat comes from the word aman, aman, peace. And the literal meaning of amanat is that you are entitled to keep something for a specific period of time. You don't own this thing. This thing has been given to you by someone else. You are not the owner and you have to return it back after the prescribed time. This is amanat. And a person who is given the amanat to keep for some time and then return it is called an amin. Like we all know, Prophet Muhammad was also given the title of Sadiq and Amin. That means he was trustworthy enough that people could leave their things with him for a certain period of time with the confidence, with the confidence on the Amin that he is going to return them their things as it is. So to understand this, first we will see Ayat 27 from Surah Al-Anfal. Allah Ta'ala says, O you who believe, betray not Allah and his messenger, nor betray knowingly your amanat. And in ayat number 58 of Surah An-Nisa, it says, Verily Allah commands that you should render back the trust's positions to those to whom they are due. That is, this is an amanat on us to give the position to those that to whom they are due, yani, meaning, meaning that we have to return the amanats to whom they belong. These are the two ayats from the Quran and now inshallah we will see with the references of the hadith how to understand this responsibility of fulfilling an amanat. Now we will see that according to Abul Hayyan Andalusi, now he was a great mufassir of the Quran. And he wrote in his book, Al-Bahar Al-Muhid. And he, the basis of amanat, he said, it depended upon thoughts and words and actions. Amanat is based upon words, thoughts and actions. That means it's not just that normally in our everyday life, we refer amanat to as money. That when someone gives me a certain amount of money, that is an amanat. But according to Andalusi, he says, no, this is based upon your thoughts. That means thoughts can also be amanat. Your words, that means in terms of secrets, in terms of advice, in terms of suggestion, in terms of what has been uh, discussed with you can be an amanat. And thirdly, actions. That means actions that are by my by my, the actions that I take as per my, the spiritual actions or as per my bodily actions, they all can come under amanat. Now we will slowly take one thing at a time and inshallah we'll try to understand because this is something very important in our lives today that we need to thoroughly understand the concept behind amanat and how important it is to take care and understand the values of amanat and they have to be followed the way they have been taught to us. Why? Because Allah in Surah Anfal also says that in Allah Allah you hibbul khayinin. Allah does not like the treacherous. That means the opposite, the opposite of amanat is khayanat, to be treacherous. And Allah Allah doesn't like that. So we need to understand the difference between the two. My further hadith today is from by Hazrat Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu. He narrates, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed us and said in his sermon, he has no iman who is not trustworthy and he has no deen who does not keep promises. So that means the first important thing to understand about amanat is that this is something which has been made a part of our Iman and to, to fulfill promises has been made a part of our Deen. 
and we need to see that in surah al mu'minun also in ayat number 8 allah taala says wal ladina hum li amanatihim wa ahdihim raun that the attributes of a mu'min in which it is very clearly said in surah al mu'minun that these are those people who take care who guard against their amanats and they guard against their promises earlier i also mentioned that these was that this treachery was also a sign of hypocrisy so here we will have to understand that in the entire uh, understanding in the entire understanding of amanat what the basis is that this is something that did not belong to me the first and foremost thing to understand is that apart from giving it a a basis of our iman that it is the basis of our iman that will that we fulfill our amanats we give them back to their owners meaning that meaning that this did not belong to me now in a case where something does not belong to me and if i am going to claim it to be mine then definitely i cannot follow the rules the way they are meant and the second thing was if i am not going to keep my promises that means i am not fulfilling the criteria of my religion we'll move on to the next of these and before the next of these i would like to mention here that amongst the sahabas there was one sahabi that was given the name of aminul ummat and i wonder if you know his name that was hazrat ubeda bin jarra hazrat ubeda bin jarra was one of those to whom nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam had given this title this man of mine is the aminul ummat one man so trustworthy that he excels from the entire umma and we also see that three sahabis in our history hazrat abu bakar siddiq radhiyallahu anhu hazrat usman bin affan radhiyallahu anhu and on number 3 we see hazrat abu ubaid uh, hazrat ubaida bin jarrah these three were the ones that they will it has been you know like categorically said about them that the highly modest out of the sahabas were these three sahabis and someone who's not going to deny you were these sahabas so may allah give us the tawfiq to also follow the seerah of our sahabas and now we move on to our next hadith in this hadith as it was said that iman someone who is not trustworthy that means he is not fulfilling his iman someone is not fulfilling his amanat he is not trustworthy he is not fulfilling his legal aspects of iman and here we see huzaifa bin yaman and huzaifa bin yaman was the one sahabi to whom nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam had given the names of those itty hypocrites and till the end till the day he died till the end he did not give the names why because nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbid him to give the names to anybody and hazrat huzaifa bin yaman did not give these names to anyone maybe in history with permission before dying if he was said so and he did not give these names to anyone till he died and we also see that he was known as the razdarin razdarane rasul that he kept his promise till the end then we also see in an ayat in surah ahzab ayat number 72 in which allah subhanahu wa taala had given this responsibility of keeping the amanat with the with the skies and the mountains and the earth but they refused to take it they refused to take it why because they said that if they were told that in case you did not fulfill the criteria of taking care of an amanat you may see the repercussions and the consequences and the repercussions are definitely hell fire for that so we see that these creations refused to own it to take it but a man took it up allah says why did a man take it why because allah says he was zaluman jahula zaluman is someone who is also just and jahula is someone who does who knows also who is aware of it also but he, still he does it why because man did not see that if he is not going to follow the rules of amanat he is going to face the repercussions he saw that amanat okay fine i can carry it yes he accepted it but today we see that after the death of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam just after 30 to 35 years after nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam death we see that the that the uh 
that the system of how to take care of an amanat started falling gradually, right after 30 to 35 years of Prophet Muhammad's death. And till today, we see that the graph is declining. Today, whenever you want to assign something to someone, like we said, according to Andalusi, it's not just about money, it's about thoughts and actions. So even if you want to entrust somebody with something for a while, you need to find somebody you can trust and you can give him the task and he is going to perform the day the way you expected him to do it. It is so hard to find. But we also see that if somebody fulfills it, then the reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if he fulfills it, that means he's fulfilling his Iman, he's fulfilled the parts of Iman, and he has fulfilled his obligations of Islam. So we move on to our next hadith in which Khawla al Ansariya radiallahu anha narrated I heard the Prophet saying, Some people are engrossed in spending Allah's wealth in an unjust manner. For such people, there will be hellfire on the day of standing. They are spending the wealth in an unjust manner. So now, let's go back to the first thing and that is that whatever has been given to us, whatever has been given to us meaning my health, all my body parts, my money, my children, my ability to speak, my ability to walk, my ability to to have or possess a skill, my talent, my time that has been allotted to me, the food that I eat, any form of risk that I have been given is not mine, does not belong to me. Even my life, this time period of my life that has been given to me is not mine, has been given to me and will be taken back by death. And within this time, I am allotted different responsibilities which are also an amanat on, on us. For example, I am a mother, I am a wife, I am a sister, I am a daughter, I am a sister-in-law, I am a mother-in-law. So these are the different forms of my responsibility. And if I work, then I have my work responsibilities. That is also imposed as an amanat on me. So what do I do then? That means I have to fulfill the criteria of assuring myself that this is not mine. I have to return it. And the best is, the best way to do is with Esan. The best way to do is, is to return it the way someone gave it to me. Without spoiling it, without losing it, without, without uh, giving back something else. I have to return it as it, as it is. Take the example of, for example, wealth. Like in this hadith, it is said that some people, what are they doing? They are spending the wealth in an unjust manner. What is unjust manner? For example, we are clearly told that we have to earn our income through halal means. And what is going to be khayana? That of course, we go on for the haram. So, if I am not going to take care of this first criteria of how am I making my income, definitely the way I am going to spend will also depend on that. Because the, from the way it comes, the way it goes. A lot of people who make their earnings through halal, they barely have enough at times and even if they have enough, they do not want to go and waste it on the haram. But people who can make this way in, they can make a way out through that also. And Allah says this is unjust. Similarly, to spend extravagantly. Now you have it, you have it through a halal means, but you're spending it extravagantly. Extravagance is also not taking care of the amanat, of the wealth, the way it was given to us. Being stingy. You know you have to spend it in certain ways. These things have to be catered, but you don't. You are being stingy. That means you're holding back to the amanat. It is not showing you the way you should have carried it out. Similarly, somebody goes out to steal the wealth of someone else, goes out to steal the money. We see bank robberies, we see house robberies, people are snatched on the roads, their mobiles are taken. This is all wealth. So this again, this means of taking it or taking it through bribery 
or other corrupted ways through fraud. This is what Allah means that some people are making their money through unjust means, unjust manners. And for that Allah has given a very clear warning of the hellfire. Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu anhu narrated, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, when a person discloses any matter to another, then looks here and there, then it is a trust. If I'm looking here and there, when I'm saying something to you, that means I don't want anyone else to hear it. I want to keep it as a secret. That means now this thing upon me has become a trust. She's trusted me so that I will keep it with me and I'm not going to go and share it with others. And sorry to say today, people of, of all walks of life, this is one thing that they cannot keep to themselves is the secrets of others. Even in friends you will see. She tells her that I, I, I trust you for not telling it to someone else. She goes and she tells it to someone else by saying that I trust you for not telling someone else. Don't go and tell her. And so it goes on. So we see that anything that has been entrusted upon me and when I was made an Amin, that meant that they were confident about me that I'm going to take care of it. I'm not going to steal it. I'm not going to rob it. I'm not going to use it on my own. I'm not going to give it to someone else. I'm not going to ruin it. I'm not going to lose it. I'll give it to you the way you've given it. For example, somebody comes up to you and says that, listen, just take care of my pen for today. I'm going to come tomorrow and take it from you. So this, is a, this pen is an amanat on you. Now, I cannot throw this pen away. I cannot give it to someone else to take it home. I cannot start writing with it myself. This is an amanat on me. And I need to return it as it is tomorrow. So if I can understand this concept behind amanat, that the amanat belongs to someone else. Someone else is the owner. I'm not the owner. So then maybe, inshallah, we will be able to understand. And this is something that we need to inculcate in our children also. You've borrowed something from your friend in class, in school. You need to return it. This is not yours. And if at all you see something in the bag that this does not belong to your child, you should ask. Parents should ask, where did you get this from? Because again, that will be an unjust means, unjust ways of getting things. And if we are not going to check on our children ourselves, then who is going to check on them? And this is going to encourage them to go around picking up other people's things without their permission. Amanat is something someone has come in and given, given it to you by their own will. Then we move on to the next hadith is that, Abdullah bin Jafar radiallahu anhu narrated, one day Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mounted me behind him and narrated to me something secretly which I would narrate to no one amongst pe people. So this shows to us that even if I have been shared about something, that means I will have to, if I'm shared about something, that means if I was told to keep it as, a, as an amanat, that means I do not have to go and discuss. This can also refer to, to the gatherings where normally in closed doors there are discussions or there are meetings. You can take any company or any government level or anywhere in any organization even at home, sometimes there are closed door meetings and discussions. And if everybody shares that this is something between us, this is something which is internally that we have discussed, does not need to be shared with outsiders, that means that's an amanat. Even to the fact that somebody is preaching, and somebody is preaching in a, in a certain context, so we cannot change the context. Even that context is an amanat on us. Sometimes people tend to pick up one part of the ayat, they skip the rest of the ayat, and they quote it in such a way which changes the context of understanding. This is khayanat. We, we, are, we can't do that. Then we also see that, take an example of a husband and wife. Sometimes the wives complain that the husbands do not take care of us, they don't give us money, or they don't take care of the children. That means he's not fulfilling the amanat bestowed upon him. He's supposed to provide them security, he's supposed to provide them the means of, of sustenance, but he's not doing that. 
does this give a good give an opportunity to the wife not to return it to the husband because in the previous hadith we have clearly read that return the trust to one who has entrusted you and do not be treacherous to one who was treacherous to you even if the husband is not fulfilling his dues this still does not allow the wife not to fill her views not to fill her dues why sometimes we see why 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 is it not allowed is because if this is going to play tit for tat then the concept of family and home that's completely ruined then and i need to understand that i have been set upon certain obligations by allah and his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a wife i have been given certain obligations to perform i have to do that because i am answerable i am answerable for my deeds i am not answerable for my husband's deeds yes that is different that we can sit in a very harmonious way and we can discuss the issues we can make one an one another understand that this is what i don't approve of and i would like you to correct it but that doesn't mean that i start denying him of his rights also in some cases you must have seen that the children they come up and they say that what have our parents given us why should we be nice to them no children have still to be nice to their they they still have to be nice to their parents why because even if the parents cannot give them anything or maybe they were not in a position to do anything for them or even if they did it deliberately they still belong to them as their children just the right of being their parents is enough for a child to give the rights of the parents then we also see that in this case we need to understand that we don't have to follow people's actions don't have to follow people's actions and neither are we going to be assessed by our names or by our personality we are going to be assessed by the actions that we are going to make the way we are going to treat people this is the way that is going to represent myself so we don't necessarily have to follow what others are doing we need to have our own rules and principles in the way that what has has been made obligatory from me to follow why because amanat has been set in the fitrat of the people allah subhanahu wa taala has set amanat in the hearts of the people and the first thing that will be taken out of the hearts is amanat and then it will be very difficult to find somebody who is trustworthy as we see today and what are the reasons why somebody cannot be trusted is because he does not realize that this is something that did not belong to him and he is responsible made responsible to return it the way he he got it and we think that this is our right this is our right and we are not answerable then we move on to another thing in that we also see there was this one caravan that came outside the madina and they had some camels with them and uh, these were very good quality animals the red camels and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was passing by and since he saw the camels he made a deal with the caravan that would you like to sell them to me and they said yes we can sell them to you now they made a deal nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam paid them and he took the camels away when when he left when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam left this caravan the people they started discussing amongst themselves that they thought that they had given it at a lesser price to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so then they started blaming one another and they said okay fine next time we will go back to him and we will ask him that you have paid us less so we you should give us some more money so one of the women in that caravan said that no the way the man treated us i don't think he made he made a mistake like that and we see that after returning to madina nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent some dates and some food to those people in the caravan which signified that yes you did give it to me on a lesser price so he compensated by sending the food and the dates now in this little event we can understand very clearly that uh, his sending the food and dates was a compensation that means nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam realized it himself also but there was no there was no wrong on him why because the deal was settled by the caravan they agreed to the price so he was not at wrong even had he not sent them the food or the dates but this is what we call ehsan when we realize ourselves for example 
there is a man who who plays a game and just like we know that fifa is going on these days and what if one of the players has cheated and he goes unchecked and he goes unchecked and for that he gets extra extra goal etc he gets an extra point he gets an extra goal whatever but within his heart do you think he's not going to condemn himself because he knows that he cheated even if people are going to come and make him wear a medal even if they come and give him a prize he knows within his heart that he has committed wrong because it's set in the fitrat of humans that's another thing that he comes up to claim and we have this example of a player in which when he had he came back he got a point which he knew he shouldn't have got and he said that i came and i returned it because he said it was he came back and he confessed that i got an extra point which was not due on me and he said it was the only thing i could do to maintain my integrity that he came up and he said that i did not win this point you made a mistake by giving a point to me look at the children who get medals now they know if they have cheated what good is that on them to keep the medals so fitra tells you from within that you've committed wrong and amanat is something which was not my property i had to return it so i'd rather go and say come out with the truth then we also see that when we go out of the way when we go out of the then the next thing is whatever has been collected in the name of allah has to be spent in the name on which it was collected you will see a lot of ngos working and if the ngos or any welfare organization or any such such uh, um, society is working where they are taking donations or anything in the name of allah so this is something directly set an amanat on them in the name of allah and it cannot be spent anywhere else for any person who is who is collecting and he is collecting in a certain name it is an amanat on us that it should be spent in the name he has collected for example if you have collected money to make a well and you go and spend that money on your child this is khayanat now you collected the money to make a well then you have to make the well this is an amanat on you you cannot spend the money the way you want to spend so then we also see that iman and amanat they both go together this is a right of the society on us that we pay the right dues to the people who have set amanat on us similarly we see that those who are entrusted with the uh, position where they are um, where they select people or where they hire people or in other words the the companies that that have a department which is called human resource hr it's their responsibility this is an amanat on them that they should hire people who are going to be hired on merit if they are going to bring in people through bribery and through sifarish that means they are not fulfilling the concept of amanat and they are answerable for that similarly we see baitul mal in the times of the sahaba baitul mal was something where we see that the that the sahabas who were in the times of hazrat umar when he was the khalifa when the sahabas had had made uh, extensions and they made uh, conquests and they got a lot of booties it was it was an understood fact that all this mal e ghanimat that has been collected will go back into the treasury of the government it was never assumed within the sahabas that since we went to fight this is our right and so now if even if we take it home it's fine something that belongs to baitul mal needs to be put back whether it is one one piece of cloth whether it is one piece of shoe lace it has to be returned and we also see that if it is not then that is khayanat and for that of course everybody is answerable for their own deeds medicines prescription this is also an amanat on the doctor that he has to prescribe to the best of his knowledge he should prescribe and if he does not know he should not state 
a false prescription. Then we also see that in the, in the times of arranging functions, whatever has been assigned to arrange for the function is an amanat on them and, 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 and the gadgets that are used is an amanat on them. And if it is not used in the proper way, that means it, 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 it is something that needs to be then checked upon. So if everybody on their own, look at the courts, people go, they have to bear witness. And if they will not bear witness in the, in the right perspective, that means they are not abiding by the amanat, which was put on them to take care, to answer in such a way that the, the, the witness, the concept, the, the bearing of the witness is proved right. You are saving a life, you are saving a case. And if you are going to turn back on the amanat, that is going to be uh, injustice. And at the end, before I end the program today, the last thing is that whatever Allah Ta'ala has stopped us from, whatever He stopped us from, there is no khair in that. And the khair that we long for is what Allah has told us to do. Allah has commanded us to do. Wa akhiru dawana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu laik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Medina, 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 Medina.